Howdy TPDL fans and happy What Wednesday. As you may know, if you live in an area where oak oil is present, you should have stopped pruning your trees by now. Yes, to lower the risk for your oak, we recommend holding off on pruning your oak trees until late June. But if you must prune your tree, make sure to cover the exposed areas with wound paint. If you might be suspicious of oak oil in your tree, please watch the rest of this video to see how to take a sample. Today we are asking the question, what do you take for an oak wilt sample? One of the good things about oak wilt is that we have very, very distinct foliar symptoms of the pathogen, but they don't always occur. These are vanal necrosis leaves, and you can see they're in various states, but sometimes you don't have leaves like that, so you have to turn to the crown of the tree to probably try to figure out what the disease is. In this case, we're going to take a sample in order to do a laboratory diagnosis. And what Sheila is doing here is trying to get a sample that is about an inch and a half to an inch long. And the branch also has leaves that show some uh, activity that might be the presence of the fungus. Here's a little bit of anal necrosis getting started on this branch right here. So now she's pretty sure she's got a great one. Uh, and here's another sample, a uh, what we call the green vein. So now she's sure that she's got a sample that is going to be sufficient to submit to the laboratory. As you can see, the main branch there is about an inch, inch and a half in diameter, and it has some laterals on there that might also be useful. So she's going to go ahead and remove those um, uh, down to, uh, looks like about an inch, uh, three quarters of an inch, and this is going to form the uh, uh, bulk of the sample that would be suitable for submission to the laboratory. She's going to cut it up into sections 8, 10 inches long. These are a little longer. They can be a little shorter than this, but nonetheless, she's got a lot of material here, so it doesn't hurt to send in four or five branches off of one location as she's cutting up right here. The more sample that we get into the clinic, the better chances are that they're going to be able to detect the fungus through isolation. And keep in mind, that's what she's trying to get here. She's trying to get a branch that is infected by the fungus in the xylem, and she's going to try to get it into the clinic so that the fungus will still be viable and be able to plate it out under clinic conditions, as you all are going to observe during your tour here. So once you have the sample ready to go, you're going to have to package it so that it gets into the clinic in, like I said, in, in condition that we can grow the fungus out. So we're going to put it in a plastic bag like this, and it always helps to throw in a few of the symptomatic leaves, the thing that made you suspect you might have oak wilt, and try to squeeze the air out of the bag now, seal it very well. Now we assume that it, you are going to pack it in an ice chest with blue ice. It's very dangerous to use real ice because real ice is going to melt during transit and we want to be sure that the sample doesn't get wet. So in this situation we can simply put it in the ice chest, put the lid on it, tape it up properly. Now notice Sheila didn't put a form in it like she's supposed to do, but nonetheless she should have filled the form out and submitted it. Again, please don't forget the form. All forms and sampling info can be found on our website, plantclinic.tamu.edu, or you can find it in the link above. See you guys next week. Bye.